this session we'll discuss about patch classes and uh, see first question is that why we need a patch classes and you might know on uh, salesforce what happens in a synchronous in a synchronous let's say if whenever you change any record the opportunity let's say if you change your opportunity the opportunity trigger will fire and your handler class will gonna invoke right so So let's suppose if we have to process a millions of records, if we want to process a million of records, then Salesforce will run into the exceptions like that query exceptions. When I say query exceptions, in a synchronous way, you can able to retrieve up to 50,000 rows. Whenever you write a select statement in the synchronous transactions, in the synchronous transactions, it will can only get you only 50,000 records. What if we want to process more than 50,000 records? Imagine this way. If you want to process more than 50,000 records, then synchronous is not an option for us. It will not gonna support. So what helps us in Salesforce in order to behave? So all we need to do, our transactional should be Channelize. Let's say, for example, let's suppose if this is my transaction, if this is my record is being updated, and I'll call my trigger. Okay, I'm calling my trigger. Now suppose, now suppose if this is getting a fifty thousand records, more than fifty thousand records, I need to process, then. I'll create some asynchronous apex. I create my asynchronous actions. What is meant by asynchronous actions? Asynchronous actions are those things which will not execute in the same time. It takes some time to execute. It will be out of the current context. Let's say if I do a mobile call, let's suppose if I run some changes, if this is my synchronous changes, if it is my synchronous changes here, from the synchronous changes, I identify, hey, this is something I cannot process now. I'll put down in an asynchronous action. So you can invoke your asynchronous actions and then this will execute a batch by batch. So what happens? It will execute 50,000 records like batch by batch. Let's say 50,000 records and you say that every batch it need to process 200 records. So it will calculate 50,000 divided by 200 now what happens it will come the number of batches it need to execute right that many times it executes that many times it executes every time it executes every time it's execute it will get a new governor limit salesforce governor limits this helps to process a large number of volume of data in an asynchronous way okay the main intention of batch apex is used to run a large jobs is used to run a large job that would exceed normal processing limits the normal processing limit for you is like a 50000 and uh, you can update only 2000 rows and you can do like one or SQLs up to 100 so all these limits will reset every time it calls every time it calls every time it calls it resets its own limits again Every time it get, get a new limit, this way you can able to manage and you can able to process a large number of jobs, large number of records in a very clever way. Okay. And what we get from a batch apex, what we get, get from a batch apex, we get two different things. It have an interface, it have an interface, batch pool interface. And from an interface, you have to implement three different methods. It is required. One is start method, execute method, finish method. Okay. Start method, finish method, execute method. Let's say if I want to start something, how many times that I can start the same job? Only one time, right? And uh, how many how many times I can finish the job? Once. So start method will execute for a first time when you are starting your job. And finish method will execute, all your jobs will finish. When I say jobs is finished, if it finishes all the batches, then it will invoke your finish method. Then it will invoke your finish method. 
So now, how, what is a number of n number of times it is executing here? Execute method. Execute method will is responsible to process your information one by one. Let's suppose, imagine this way. What if this jobs fails? Imagine you have five different jobs. In this second job fail, does it continue to the third job or it will not continue? It continues. This only. So the advantage here is if something is fails, it fails only within that batch. It don't care about the next batches. It continues to execute from first batch to the last batch. So these are the advantages that we can get from a batch apex context. Clear? And now let's create how we can create a batch class. Let's suppose SFDX create Apex class. I can say account processing account processing batch. What I named my Apex class is account processing batch. Imagine in your developer edition, you have more than 50,000 records, more than like 1 billion records, okay? So if I want to update every day morning, if I want to update their account names every day, how can I do that? First, I need to write my start method. First, I need to write my start method. As I mentioned before, your class should implement an interface called batch, batches, batchable, right? So implements database dot batchable s object you need to write this statement if you want to execute if you want to convert your apex class as a batch class then you need to implement an interface called database dot batchable now i'll write a query public okay and you need to write your start method public I'll use here as a database dot query locator. So start method will always get you the query. Okay. Start. This is a start method which always get a query. So here we have a parameter. The, whatever I'm defining here, these are the standard terms. So this is how it should be written always. Database dot batchable context. And I'll name general terms we always use BC. That's how the traditional Salesforce developers are always following. I don't want to confuse. I just wanted to make the standards in the documentation. I'm saying BSC. It doesn't really matter whether you are writing BSC or anything. It's just a normal variable. If you want to use, you can use anything. Okay. Because it is need to return a query, then what I can do? Return database dot query locator and I'll write my query here select ID from account ID comma name comma description from account now what happened it is calling my I'm writing my query Imagine here you are getting more than 50,000 records, okay? And what is the second method? So, whenever I call this method, start is run. Start, what it is doing? It is giving a query. So, now who is responsible? Execute method. Public void. You can't change these naming conversions. You have to follow the same thing because this is an interface coming from Batchable. Yes. Data public void execute. Here I can say database dot batchable context and I'll always use BC and I'll say list of what records I'm getting here. Scope records. So every time when I say if I have it 50,000, if I'm passing 200, so every time it will get 200, 200, 200, 200 in the scope. 
that Salesforce system will gonna handle it. We don't need to worry about. We need to imagine that this is coming as a batch by batch. I mean, job by job. And then we need to write. We need to perform a business logic here. Two hundred is a maximum that you. A uh, two hundred uh, is a default size. But you can process from one record to two thousand records. If by default, if you imagine that if you are calling a batch class where you never mention any batch size, by default it will consider as a two hundred. Or if you want to vary a number, you can vary a number uh, from one to two thousand. One to two thousand, two k. And now here I can say what is the last method that we discussed uh, before? It's a public void finish. Finish yes. Database dot batchable context. finish logic so finish logic it could be alert the users or admin about batch completion or invoke you can also invoke another batch once you finish this job at the finish method you can call another batch apex Likewise, you can call up to three batches. That's it. This is a batch one. I'm calling another batch. That is calling another batch, and that can call another batch. You can you cannot call more than that. Yep, three depth. Now, what I need to perform here? Let's imagine. All I need to update my account description equal to account name plus updated time. Okay. So what I'll do for account ACC or I can say record colon scope records. I'll say record dot description equal to record dot name plus updated on. System dot now. Now means it's a date time which will give like current when it is getting updated, and I'll say update record. So this is what we don't need to see. You can write whatever complex. Oh, this is my bad. I need to perform update on my scope records, not on a record. That what it is showing an error. Method does not exist. What is? Oh, sorry. I need to pause. Here I need to say get query locator in a typo. I might get wrong. Here you need to use get. This is query locator. You need to get a query locator. Get query locator method. Okay, this is deployed successfully. Now let's imagine how many records we have in Salesforce. Currently, we'll check how many accounts we have. Okay, and moreover, I also need to check if any updates on account is updating something else. Account. If I say pro coding skills, if I edit, if I say from where this is coming, I don't know. Okay, looks like I have a trigger which is causing this. Account trigger, account trigger handler, 
Okay, afternoon set record name. For example, uh, not able to find. Let me check. Is there any flows we have? Flows account flow. Okay, here it is. Building country where I'm signing, right? Let's deactivate this. Okay, perfect. Now, if I edit, if I take off, So now I think it's not getting updated. So we are good. And we can now what I'll do, I'll count number of account records I have already. Okay. So now let's go to query editor. Query editor, I'll say select ID from account. Or I can simply say count. So I have 24 records, okay? If I process my batch job, it's just like a 200. How many batches it will execute? Only one batch, right? Let's go here. I'll say Apex jobs. There is a in setup, you can find Apex job. Nothing was there. So I'll execute a batch now. I'll say that this is my batch class, right? To execute a batch class, first you need to create an object. Yep, yep. It's always same. The way you create an object of a class, you need to initialize your object. And then I say database dot execute batch. OBJ. By default, if I don't provide anything here as a 200 or 1, it will consider as a 200 by default. Because I have only 24 records, how many times it will execute? Only one time. If I execute now, so the execution of batch job, you need to use database dot Yep, database.execute batch is a standard and you need to pass your object of a uh, Apex class where you wanted to say that it's a batch class. Once you get that, that's it. Here you can see one batch executed, one batch process, how many values? Zero. If I can go and refresh this page, I should be seeing updated with a time date time. updated on 12.20.05, right? Let me do one more thing. Instead of this, I'll say one. How many times it will execute now? 24 times. If you can see here, this is where we'll see the results. Number of bad jobs processed and failed. 24 times, right? And this is updated on when? Let's check this way. And I'll open another record account. And I open this. This is updated on 12.21.03. There is a time difference, right? Because we are executing one by one. It is taking. If I say 100, how many batches it will execute? One batch. If it execute and finishes, then what should I get? The times between these two should be same, right? Because they process in the same time. 
details 122154 exactly time matches right because they process in the symbol if i process them as again one so they are processing a batch by batch one batch finishes next batch it have a time difference for sure right we even that should be recorded Twelve twenty two thirty one. Details. Twelve twenty two thirty one. Looks like it's not getting updated. Twelve twenty two. Thirty-five. So it have its own five seconds different, four seconds difference. So the main advantage of yeah. yep. So currently, whatever we are processing is in a single batch, but every time the batch size is one. So first record it process, and then it will go to second record. So there is a time delay. If I have a twenty-four records, what if I am checking my first record with the fourth record? So it need to be processed one by one until it reaches four. Time will change, seconds will change. That is getting recorded. So just to confirm with my definition, if we mention everything as a batch size two hundred, they are getting updated with the right same time because they are processing within a single batch. If I am mentioning a less than batch size, so it is processing very independently. So every time it gets its own governor limits. Governor limits in the sense again the query limits, database operations, everything will reset again and again, again and again. If it is the end times of execution, then your governor limits will gonna, uh, I mean, reset up to end times, which is as equivalent as execute method.